The IDF presents evidence and documents that show that the disaster in Rafah was caused by ammunition from the terrorist organization Hamas. After just one week of activity, the American-built pier that was placed to deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza City was dismantled and shut down, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad organization in Gaza launched a psychological terror attack in the form of another video of an Israeli hostage suffering in captivity. Let's dive into the details. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 235th day of the war against Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, and the Houthis. The IDF spokesman issued a statement in English on Tuesday evening regarding the disaster in Rafah in the Gaza Strip, in which he presented documentation that a large fire which resulted in several civilian deaths was caused by the combustion of Hamas ammunition. Most specifically, from the initial investigation presented to the Chief of Staff Herzia Levy, and now published to the general public, it appears that 47 meters from the scene of the incident was a Hamas rocket launcher, likely containing ammunition. Additionally, according to the IDF statements, the site that was struck was more than a kilometer away from the humanitarian safe zone and there were no tents housing refugees in that area that was hit. Rather, it was the collection of closed sheds. Before the attack, the area was closely examined and the intelligence indicated that there were no women and children at that site. Furthermore, the attack was carried out with two missiles, each of them with a warhead weighing 17 kilograms. The IDF spokesperson declared, our munitions alone could not have ignited a fire of this size. The statement continued by saying that there is a strong suspicion that Hamas had stored weapons and ammunition in this area and that there were videos posted to social media by Gazan residents showing secondary explosions at the site supporting this assessment. There were also phone calls intercepted and recorded by the IDF Signals Intelligence Unit 8200 between Hamas operatives, which also support this assessment. <laughs> Meanwhile, IDF forces, including the Bislach Brigade, which are infantry, joined the maneuver under Division 162 under the command of Brigadier General Itzhak Coin and they entered the deepest point of the ground maneuver in the heart of the city of Rafah in the past 24 hours. In recent days, troops operating along the Philadelphia Corridor discovered unusual large quantities of weapons, ammunition, and explosive devices, as well as several tunnels, some of which were dug under the border and used for smuggling in both directions, from Egypt to Gaza and from Gaza to Egypt. It is important to remember that Rafah is an area that Hamas uses to smuggle weapons and all kinds of other contraband into the Gaza Strip, and there is good reason to believe that the remaining Israeli hostages are being kept in Rafah. This means there is a real danger that they could be smuggled out of Gaza through these tunnels, and this would place them in additional danger and make it much harder to try and rescue them. In any case, the goal Hamas has to rebuild its control over the Gaza Strip is impossible unless it can remain in control of Rafah and especially the smuggling tunnels that run under the border with Egypt. That is why this city is of such great strategic significance and why Israel must continue the offensive against Hamas in that location. Please continue to spread the truth, share and follow us and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Take a minute 
click the follow button so that together we can spread the truth of what is happening in Israel, in the Middle East, with as many people as possible. Moving north from Rafah to Gaza City and the sad story of America's floating pier, which cost over $320 million and was meant to relieve the suffering of the civilian population of the northern Gaza Strip. After many delays, it finally began operating two weeks ago, but on Tuesday evening, it was reported that parts of it had broken up under the pressure of heavy winds and high waves. This came after smaller boats that were being used in this project washed ashore near Ashdod, this is an Israeli city, last week after suffering technical difficulties. Altogether, this temporary pier has operated for only about a week and has been used to transport only 90 trucks loaded with aid, most of which were looted on the way from the logistical complex that was built by the IDF on the humanitarian axis in the northern Gaza Strip to the warehouses from where the aid was meant to be distributed by the United Nations and the World Food Program. Pentagon Deputy Spokesperson Sabrina Singa confirmed late Tuesday evening that the floating pier will be removed from its current location off the Gaza Strip and moved to the port of Ashdod in Israel where it will undergo repairs and after that it is hoped that it will be placed back in position so it can be used to transfer humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip by sea. According to her, the reconstruction and repair of the pier will last at least one week. Here at TBN Israel, we will continue to update you on this subject. So stay focused on the truth and take an active part in sharing it with the rest of the world that seeks to know what is really happening in Israel. If you want to see more videos like this one, please consider making a financial donation by going to our website at www.tbn.org Israel or clicking on the donate button in this YouTube channel. Elsewhere in the Gaza Strip, the Iranian-backed Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorist group published a psychological terror video featuring 27-year-old Israeli hostage Sasha Tupanov. This young man was kidnapped along with his mother Lina, his grandmother, Irina and his friend Sapir from the family's home in Kibbutz near Oz on October 7th. Lina, Irina and Sapir returned from captivity after 54 days, but Sasha remained in the Gaza Strip. We don't want to help the terrorists achieve their goals with this video, so we're showing it to you without sound. But I'll tell you that we see Trupanov when he says, my name is Alexander Tupanov. Citizens of Israel who are protesting, in the coming days, you will hear from me the whole truth of what happened to me and the other prisoners here in Gaza. I ask you to be patient. It is likely that his words were dictated by his captures as part of a psychological terror warfare. Tupanov's mother, Yelena, said in reaction to the video, seeing my Sasha today on TV makes me very happy but also breaks my heart that he is still so long in captivity. I appeal to everyone, to all the decision makers, please do everything, but everything to bring my son and all the abductees back home. This is the latest example of the psychological warfare that the terrorist organization Hamas and others in the Gaza Strip have been waging since October 7th. It comes just a few days after Hamas claimed to have lured soldiers into a tunnel in the Jabalia refugee camp in the northern Gaza Strip where terrorists managed to kill fighters and kidnap their bodies. That night, the IDF spokesman clarified in an unusual message that there is no incident of kidnapping a soldier. Please help us push back against these lies and deceit by continuing to help us spread the truth share and follow us and do everything so that as many people as possible are exposed to the truth and know what really is happening in Israel and in the Middle East. Next, we shift our focus further south to the Red Sea. The British maritime security company in Bray reported a recent incident in the Red Sea about 54 nautical miles southwest of the port city of Hudaydah in Yemen. The incident involved a merchant ship passing through the area 
being hit by three missiles, presumably fired at it by the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. The ship sustained serious damage and was reported to be listing to one side after damage to its cargo. Beyond the missile attacks on merchant ships sailing through the Bab el-Mandab Straits, another threat by the Yemeni Iranian terrorist organization has emerged. The economic media portal Globes reported this week that four underwater communication cables running beneath Jeddah in Saudi Arabia and Djibouti in East Africa appear to have been damaged. According to the reports, the AAE cable, which connects East Asia to Europe via Egypt, was completely cut. The cable, whose communication capacity reaches 40 terabytes per second, connects China with the West through countries belonging to the Iranian-Chinese axis, including China itself, Pakistan and Qatar. The story about the damaged cables was uploaded by executives in the global communications and cable industry on the LinkedIn and X social media networks. In conclusion, this is a war between good and evil for control over the world, and we know whose side God is on. So please pray for the peace of Israel, for the abductees, those that have been kept in the Gaza Strip for so many days, for the peace of the IDF soldiers who defend all of us. Pray for the peace of Israel. Pray for the civilians that are affected by this conflict, those in the Gaza Strip that are also being held captive by Hamas and the Israeli civilians. And most importantly, please join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.